I'd like to say good evening to everyone. My name is Peggy Truis, and I'll be your moderator for this evening's lecture. And welcome you all to the Institute of Divine Metaphysical Research. This is a school and not a church. Neither are we affiliated with any religious organizations. This school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization that's dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh or Elohim and the operation of this eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. We were incorporated in the state of California in 1958. Since that time, we have established branch schools across the United States, Canada, and other foreign countries. The Syracuse branch was established in 1969. At this time, I'd like to recognize the presence of the Dean of Syracuse branch, Dr. Patrick Trevison, our president, Dr. Robert Welch, and our vice president, Dr. John Kennedy. Now, in this school, throughout the lecture this evening, we'll be using a true correct original name and title for the Father, the Word, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, which are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title, Lord. For the Word, your Son, we use the divine title, Elohim. This has been improperly substituted in most Bibles with the title, God. And the name of the Holy Spirit manifesting in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted with Jesus or Jesus Christ. Now, Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 5 that there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord and God, Elohim is a divine title, which means that Elohim is the title that your Creator chose for Himself. Jesus is a name, but it's an erroneous name. My investigation on your part into an encyclopedia or dictionary would prove that neither the Hebrew language, the Greek language, nor the Latin language contain any character or letter in their alphabet that would produce the sound that is made by the letter J. Neither was there a J in the English language until some 1,400 years after the death of Messiah. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible and untrue renderings of the true name of the Father and the Son. Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Now Yahweh, our Heavenly Father, is pure spirit. And in his pure spirit state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh symbolized on this chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself as a cloud in no particular or descriptive shape and form. Take a look at this chart and see we have a cloud painted all the way around the edges of the chart so that everything on the chart abides within the cloud in like manner. Everything in the universe abides within this pure spirit state of Yahweh. And Yahweh, knowing the man cannot perceive of within this pure spirit state, takes on shape and takes on form right within himself as Yahweh element. This is the word or son, a super incorporeal being. That is, having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh and blood. This visionary shape and form can only be seen by divine vision and only understood by divine revelation. Later on, the self-same spirit manifests himself in a physical body and walk the earth plane as Yahshua Messiah, whom the world has come to know erroneously as Jesus or Jesus Christ. Now there is only one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So the simple yet intelligent question we should ask ourselves is what was the name of the Savior during the time he walked the earth plane? You can get a better understanding of the name title by reading a preface to a holy name Bible. Now also in this school we teach about a divine pattern of the universe. We call it a divine pattern because this is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt and into the wilderness of Sinai, he then called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and revealed this tabernacle pattern to him in a vision. Moses was instructed to return to the wilderness of Sinai and build one exactly as he had seen in the mount. This tabernacle pattern consists of the most holy place, a holy place, and the four brought it out. These three compartments make up the one tabernacle pattern. And in this school, we show proof how that everything is made and operates according to the structure and function of this threefold tabernacle pattern. And absolutely nothing escapes the pattern. Now, in this school, we have ten primary constitutional aims or objectives. They are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second, to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua Messiah, without distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, caste, or color. 
Third is to investigate the unexplained spirit law or so-called law of nature and the power of latent in man. Fourth is to encourage and promote the study of scriptures, compared religion, psychology, philosophy, modern, practical, and occult science. Fifth is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Sixth, to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose through the dispensations and ages. Seventh, to discern and avoid being deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensations of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation and faith which was once delivered unto the sons or children of Yahweh. Ninth, to make known that Yahweh from the beginning ordained. There is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua Messiah with the hope of immortal glorification in the newer state. Our watch for this peace and our slogan is speak the truth. I'd like to have this evening's meeting dedicated with prayer um, by um, Dr. Frank DeMassey. That will be followed by a scripture reading. First Peter, first chapter, verses 3 through 12. Our scripture readers this evening are Dr. Ben Kometi and Dr. Scott Miller. And that will be followed by hospitality announcements by myself. Scripture we read out of the Holy Name Bible, containing the Holy Name version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities in various manuscripts, revised by A.B. Train of the Scripture Research Association. First Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through 12. Blessed be the El and Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a living hope by the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that faith not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of Yahweh through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in the heaviness, though manifold trials that the trial of your faith being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahshua the Messiah, whom having not, see, not seen ye love, and whom, though now you see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the reward of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the spirit of the Messiah which was in them did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of the Messiah and the glory that should follow, unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you, by them that have preached the glad tidings unto you, with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Uh, that's First Peter, the first chapter, verses 3 through 12. I appreciate everybody. 
about you being here in attendance with us and know that uh, I think your time here will be well spent. That uh, you've got the vision before you, you've got people that know what it's all about and that you'll be hearing from. So I look forward to a profitable evening. So for our first speaker this evening, we'll hear from Dr. Dan Shepard.
we're concerned about, can we have uh, Romans 14, 17, please? We're, we're concerned about the kingdom of Yahweh. Okay? But nobody else, ha people without an understanding don't, don't even know it exists. They think whatever they think. You know, we read over the years how you, even the Pope is messing around with Jerusalem. Yeah. But, uh, you got there, Scott? Romans 14 and 17. For the kingdom of the element is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Right. The kingdom is, I usually say it's state of mind, but even our minds at least from <coughs> our minds work on manifestations. Talk about our souls. They're, they are correlative because the souls animate our body and our souls are the things that are going on. But what we think of as our mind in this creation is not going to be the same in the next creation because it's going to be founded on different manifestations. So I'm going to say our soul. And the place of our soul is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And as defined by the Holy Spirit. You could, uh, you got righteousness, peace, and joy there, right? Now righteousness is one of those words who ask 30 people what righteousness is. You're going to get 18 or 60, 90 different answers on a good day, depending on the time of day. But the righteousness under this covenant is having the Holy Spirit, having quickened your soul, and thus giving you the faith in Yahweh. Okay? Uh, and I just thought it was interesting that it kind of worked out together. Okay, why don't we go to the uh, scripture reading? Because, like I said, the world doesn't have a clue. Uh, is this uh, 2 Corinthians 12 chapter? Weapons are not carnal. 10th chapter, 2 <clears throat> Corinthians 10. 10. 2 uh, Corinthians 10 and 2. Or 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Right. And the flesh is not just this. That ground over there in the Middle East, that's the flesh. These religions that are manifestly, I'll say, giving them an excuse to squabble over it, are the flesh. Read, please. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Elohim, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. Right. That's what the Holy Spirit's going to do. And could you read that again, please? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through Elohim. To the pulling down of strongholds. Right. The pulling down of strongholds. Now where are the strongholds that we're going to be pulling down? Jericho? No. Russia? No. North Korea? No. no. Read, please. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of element. Right. Imaginations. Vain imaginations against Elohim for the truth. And and it's like, I'm pretty sure it's 1 Corinthians. We don't have to get it. 1 Corinthians, first chapter. It talks about the foolishness of preaching, right? And how the Greeks try to figure it out and the Jews are looking for a sign. 
but it's just the foolishness of preaching and the base things of the world confound the mind. Because the, the one who's doing it is Yahweh. In people's souls. That's where it's got to be changed. Now, you're not going to save somebody's soul by killing them. And you're not going to save your own soul by killing somebody. <coughs> but that's the way the world is. Okay, can we go to the scripture reading, please? Nice uh, to start out with some basic. <coughs> 1 Peter 1 and 3. Blessed be the Elohim and Father of our Savior, Yahshua the Messiah, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah from the dead. Okay, the hope. You know? The problem with the world is their hope is in the flesh. And working in a hospital, their hope is in that physical life. But, as I just said a few minutes ago, this ain't about the physical life. It's about the soul and the spiritual life of the soul. Uh, Scott, can you get uh, 1 Corinthians 15, 15? Oh, you were, were you reading the scripture? Yeah. Okay, that's what you get. Okay, read please. <clears throat> to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away. Recently. Okay, an inheritance. Now gold's pretty good. It goes through a lot and it keeps on kicking. <clears throat> but that's not the inheritance we're talking about. Diamonds. Diamonds are pretty. They're expensive. And I think you could confirm this. They're not all that rare. In fact, I was watching a, a video on Africa's greatest kingdoms. And guess who they were talking about? De Beers. Yeah, because they got into, you know, the, how they hoard the diamonds and try to, the way they advertise them, you know, you're a really bad guy if you don't spend two months' salary on the engagement. Yeah. Yeah. That's the way of the world and the way it's it going to be. And, and a little bit of what we're going to talk about talks about being able to handle, and I'm not talking about the engagement ring. I'm talking about the way the world works and having the faith to resist their tactics as opposed to Yashua's tactics. Read, please. Verse, uh, okay, you got that? First Corinthians 15 and 50. This I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of Elohim, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. And, and this is First Corinthians 15 chapter, right? Mm -hmm. And, and I'm not going to take the time to do it, but you get in there and talks about how this is this is what we got. This goes into the grave. It's corruptible. It's terrestrial. And what comes out is not corrupt, just like the inheritance. It's a spiritual body for our souls. Okay, so if, if people want to take the time, it's 1 Corinthians 15, chapter. Okay, Scott, could you read, please? And, and that's not just the only place. Now, throughout the history, you see all the prophets, how they wanted the truth, and they were willing to lose their lives for it. Okay, read please. Uh, 1 Peter 1 and 4. To an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and it fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you. That's the kingdom we were talking about before. Righteousness, peace. For me, that's big, because I'm not real good about the joy thing. But um, that's part of it. It'll be there. Peace. Peace of mind throughout. And we'll, and we'll get to more of it in further in the scripture reading. Consider, uh, the fact that there was a lady um, with whom I talk a lot at work. And, uh, and she has some ideas. She used to date somebody that went to the Elmira class. So she's been to a few classes. And she was saying this week how she's concerned. You know, 
the missiles coming out of North Korea. She heard about the evacuation from North Carolina, Outer Banks. She didn't know exactly why that was. And she's realizing now how bad Trump is as president. Because she voted for him, she was a long time, she's a long time Republican. But she was getting really concerned. And I mean, I could say, and I did say, my faith is in Ellen. He's got everything done under control. Okay. But uh, it can be disconcerting. Maybe not as disconcerting as when you're five or six years old and the air raid goes off and you got to run down the hall and find some place to hide or get under your desk because you think the Russians are going to, the Soviets are going to drop a bomb up the street. But you know, we'll see what happens. Like I said, Elohim's got it. Uh, people are agitating the United States. We're being isolated by the policies of this president. But the bottom line is, our faith is not in the United States. Mm -hmm. our, our, our does not, it doesn't do us any good to have our faith in the United States. Even if it was the 50s, Eisenhower, and, you know, people were tired of war, so they didn't start one for a while. And it, at least that's the way it's portrayed now. I know it's not that way on it. Into a, it wasn't that way on an individual basis. And the 60s kind of tore that all up. That's why it's the best decade ever. Uh, read, please. Who are kept by the power of Elohim through faith on salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through marriage. Okay, could you go back to that, please? Faith and salvation. Uh, who are kept by the power of Elohim through faith unto salvation. Right. See, that's what the Holy Spirit does. Gives us that faith in the Holy Spirit, in Yahweh, so that we... <coughs> Put our faith in the tactics of Yahweh instead of putting our faith in the tactics of the world. And by tactics, I'm talking about gifts of the Spirit. Uh, Deb, could you get uh, Galatians 5.22, but maybe pick it up a little bit? Galatians 5. Pick it up with the bad stuff. And 17, for the flesh lost against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Okay, so like, and, and I'm going to emphasize this for the people, and maybe and for the people here, but the people at home. This does not mean that you can't have a life. You don't give up everything and move into a cave somewhere. The point is, where is your ultimate faith? When I first started coming to this class 30 years ago, you know, I didn't want any part of that, part of a regular life. Because I thought, well, we're not going to be around that long. But if somebody came into class today, I would say, live your life, because we talk about it all the time, um, six days of creation, how they correlate to the six thousand years of history, and we just talk about a lot more about this creation ending. Yeah, we all is going to rest, and we're going to go into a new period. <coughs> but I would suggest somebody who just came in to live your life as if you're going to die of old age, but not using the tactics of the world, use the tactics of Yahweh, which these are the tactics, some of the tactics of the world. And I want, to, I want to make the point, these are principles. Okay? So nobody can tell you how to manifest these things. Okay? The spirit in you 
will cause them to be manifest. Read, please. The flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. Right. So our physical lives are the flesh, but as long as the Holy Spirit is in us, it won't war against it. But in the world, you got the whole world is the flesh, and it's warring against the spirit. Read, please. And these are contrary, the one to the other, <coughs> so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Right. And, it, and basically, as I was saying before, it gets down to where is your soul? Is your soul seeking ultimate satisfaction, righteousness, peace, and joy in the flesh or in the Holy Spirit? Remember, the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. not in the Baltimore Catechism or in the Book of Mormon. Or in the Vedas, I'm pretty sure that's a Buddhist holy book. Whichever you want. Okay? Who, 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 were you reading, Deb? Yes. But if you be led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness. These are the tactics of the world. And you can look up the stats. You know, now this is taught. This I'm, I'm using physical examples. Yeah, you know, marriage is not a great bet. In fact, these days the stock market's a better bet than marriage. But with these, these negative principles also have spiritual realities. Okay, read it, please. Uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry. Sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, wrath, factions, seditions. And, and, and a lot of that, that, read those again, please. Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife. Hatred, strife. Jealousy, wrath, factions, seditions. Factions, seditions. Heresies. <coughs> No. And I, I know we've got an older shaker type group here, so somehow a good portion of this group is retired. But for, in fact, <coughs> there's a few of us that still work a regular job. And that's where, well, you do it, any, you do it anywhere. I relate to what happens at work. Because I don't spend a lot of time with people outside of work. Just the, the backbite, the strife, the factions, the, the viciousness with which people try to make their point. And the factions, you know, one time, up on the second floor, we have somebody that registers. And the person that I thought was registering was downstairs, so I asked somebody, who's up on the second floor? So instead of just calling up on the second floor, I asked one of the supervisors, instead of just calling up on the second floor, she went and got the unit boss, and then went out, and in front of everybody, attacked the person who assigned somebody to the second floor. Now, are you concerned about the patients getting registered, or you just want to undermine somebody and tear them down? And, like I said, I relate to what happens at work. People, if you're dealing with people without an understanding of the Holy Spirit, of Yahweh, you're going to see it. People just scratch it and climb, trying to get up on somebody else. Read, please. Envies, murderers, or murders, drunkenness, revelings, and the like. These are the tactics of this world. 22, please. These are the tactics. Of Yahweh all of But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, self control. Against such there is no law. Because Yahweh, and I'm talking about the whole Godhead, has it under control. So if we put our faith in the tactics of the world or the flesh, we're not putting our faith in the tactics of Yahweh. 
Okay, uh, thank you. Okay, Scott, could you go back to the scripture reading? Did I have anything else, Phil? Uh, 1 Peter 1 and, and uh, 5. Who are kept by the power of Elman through faith unto salvation. That's, that's the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Kept through the power, or the, which is the Holy Spirit in somebody. Okay? Uh, well, read, please. Ready to be revealed in the last time, wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. See? That's why these things happen. That's why we're put in this world. Um, I'll give you an example. Osteoporosis for older people. How do you, what's the best way to combat osteoporosis? Wear padding. Calcium. Hmm? Calcium. Wear padding. Gravity resistant exercise. Okay? I mean, you can eat all the calcium a lot, but if your body doesn't demand it, it's not going to be replaced. The gravity resistant exercise puts a stress on the bones. We've talked before about the biosphere. I haven't found any specific exam uh, articles on it, <coughs> but I've heard references. I've, re I've found references to it. They made up this biosphere, and it was perfect in any way except for what, Debbie? No wind. No wind. And so the trees didn't grow correctly and they needed the resistance of the wind and for whatever you want to do you can't get better unless there's some resistance now if, uh, 12 there's a bunch of people going to be taking the civil service test from are you from the unit I work in? And the spelling, is that going to be full of three and four letter words? No. No. Is whatever, there's not a lot of math. Uh, there's numerizing and alphabetizing. Are you going to be alphabetizing three and four letter words? No. No. They got to be able to do stuff that a lot of other people can't do. Right. And if they're going to study for it, they're not going to be getting a lot of uh, Barney books or whatever. I don't know what they're reading these days. <laughs> no. I, got, I, I got a lot of Dr. Seuss. Mm -hmm. And even some of that's pretty, some of the structure of that is pretty sophisticated. Green eggs and ham, somebody gave him a challenge. You got so many words. Write a book. Mm. But, uh, okay, read please. But that's why he, that's why Yahweh Allah has set the world up this way. So that the true worshipers can grow in faith. And, and then to that, they have to have, you have trials, right? What do you have? Uh, okay. No, in the scripture reading. Six. Trials or temptations? Uh, trials. trials? Which Bible are you using? King James. King James? You got trials or temptations? Uh, temptations. Temptations. That's what it was in the original. You got your Schofield? Trials. And uh, what kind of Bible do you have? A holy name, yeah. Because you read from a holy name to start the class, right? Yeah. Right. Well, the point is, the Schofield, uh, C.I. Schofield went in there, edited, took out some of the more archaic Middle English, and he, he brought it up to date. Temptations, trials, to me they're kind of the same. You know, unless you're getting the specific, uh, you know, William Sapphire, Noah Webster 
kind of anal retentive definition type thing. But the point is, we got to go through these things to make us stronger in the spirit. Okay, read please. And that it's it's like I said, it's all under control. And it starts right back here with Adam. We talked about it before, but it's one thing about the camera. You don't know who's watching. Adam didn't mess up Yahweh Elohim's plan. It was set up. Uh, Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Isaiah 14, 24, please. Just two quick ones. Isaiah 46 and 9. Remember the former things of old, for I am Elohim, and there is none else. I am El, and there is none like me. Okay. Declaring the end from the beginning. Well, first of all, just a quick note, there's none like Elohim. There's no three divine persons in one God. No. Separate but equal. No. Not. Nah. Read, please. No. Declaring the end from the beginning. And right. from ancient the end times. From beginning and from ancient times. The things that are not yet done. Saying. My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Okay. He's declared the end from the beginning. And really, he declared it from here, back in the clock. Okay? Before Elohim was begotten. I don't want to get to uh, 1424. Isaiah 1424. Yahweh of hosts had sworn, saying, Surely as I have thought, so shall it come to pass. And as I have purposed, so shall it stand. Right. Adam didn't screw it up. He was supposed to fall. So that eventually, as this purpose worked its way out, salvation would be in Yahweh. In the spirit, not in the flesh. It's also set up that way that there ain't going to be a lot on the boat, on the Yahweh boat, or Yahshua's train. Right? Not a lot of cars in Yahshua's train. Read, please. Uh, did, you have, did you have something? Yeah, oh, you read it. You read 46, 9, 10. Scripture reading, please. Uh, 1 Peter 1, and I'll pick it back up in 6. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. And, and that's just that's why he has stuck us in the world, but we're not of the world. Israel back then, physical Israel does have a place. They're an example. They were a chosen people. They were the least of all people. But that's the way Yahweh Elohim works. You can't take the United States, we'll say 50 years ago, okay? Back when they were the greatest country in the world. They'll never be great again because the countries we used to abuse for their resources, they got nuclear weapons now. <laughs> so we can't do that anymore. And you can't take the United States and Guatemala. The United States goes and takes over Guatemala. Not, not impressive. That's one thing they say about Muhammad Ali. He was so impressive because he had so many worthy, so many great opponents. Okay? And Yahweh El has created Satan, who is far superior to us. <coughs> He allowed him to run the world so that we would be forced, if we wanted salvation, to go to Yahweh on his terms. I, I know that's, like I said, I know we don't know who's there, but I don't have time to, we don't have time to explain much more detail. Okay, uh, read please. That's where the trials come in. We're here, we're working with Yahweh Elohim's tactics in a world that uses weapons that are carnal. And when I say carnal, I'm talking about 
what was we read about there in the first few chapters of the chapter of Galatians. That's the way they work. Okay, read please. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahshua the Messiah. Right. It just... Pick your pick, pick whatever you think in this world is the ultimate accomplishment or the ultimate pleasure or just what you want most. Whatever you're going to do, you're going to die physically. It's corruptible. You know. Look at look at some of these movie stars. You know, we think of them as so handsome, beautiful. Elizabeth Taylor. She wasn't making Father of the Bride when she was sixty-five years old. <coughs> she couldn't even remember a lot of time Saturday Night Live. <coughs> Paul Newman. He was still pretty good looking for a guy who was 80 years old, but not so hot now. Whatever. It just, the reward is the kingdom, it's incorruptible. And because the Holy Spirit is pushing us, causing us to walk in His ways, use His tactics, we're going to be at odds with the world. We're going to be the spirit is warring against the flesh. Mm -hmm. And for the true worshipers, that's the way it's going to be to the end. Whether it's the end of the physical creation or the end of this creation. Because a lot of the people here are a lot closer to the end of this creation than they were 30 years, when I, 30 years ago when I came in. Any questions, please ask. Where he studied, 
if you have full of blackboards, and then all the blackboards full of all different quotes from different people, different sources, but yet never once just understood or knew or, or thought about the letter J. I never once seen the things that we know and that we've been revealed, Yahweh, through the action of His grace, has revealed to us are so precious that we just don't realize. And here's this guy, he had a whole room, this is a true story, this guy had a whole room full of, of witnesses and of course through the uh, story it's a so-called migration of him going from an atheist who accepted Jesus and watching his wife get into a lake and get baptized and, and seeing that the wife coming back and saying, well, she's, she's different, she's never going to be the same. All the things, all the, the tricks that that mystery of iniquity has, that we recognize, they just succumb to. And apparently, this guy wrote this book, and it was, he sold 14 million copies. And now this guy is still is a reverend, a, a professor in Houston, Texas, and his children, are all pastors and they're all Jesus followers and you know so the, the moral of the story here is here this guy went through all and I'm talking about extensive research and Yahshua, the grace of Yahshua wasn't put upon him to see just a simple thing and here we are walk through this door and stand before this gospel and, and all of a sudden someone from this floor says, hey, you know that? The J didn't come into existence until the 1600s. And all of a sudden a light bulb flashes the bubbles. Holy cow. I never thought that. Never seen that. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit. What's the name? The Creator has a name. Never thought that. Being baptized in water. Don't even clean you outside. Let them clean you inside. Never thought that. Now all these things were in this movie, and they made it a Christian feel-good movie where they thought it was powerful. And then, oh, look at this, you know, this is the way to go. And it just made me realize how slick that guy is, because talk about a rigged game, he's got you coming and going. Because you think you're, you know, because at first they were at odds with each other, this guy, this reporter, and his wife, because he was an atheist, and she was believing in Jesus. And her believing in Jesus thinks that she's saved, and him, Believe it or not, they think she's nuts. And at the end of the moral, the moral of the story is, they both are, ended up being deceived. You know, it, it's just, we have to realize and appreciate where we sit and what we know. Because it's precious. It's life itself. As we even understand what life is. Because we didn't know what life was until we walked through that door. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Scott. This whole thing about everything here is the salvation of our soul. That's what this is all about. It's our soul. What does it gain a man if he, if he conquers the world and loses his soul? It's about your soul. Go ahead. Uh, verse 5. Who are kept by the power of Elohim through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein you greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, you are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith, being much more precious than that of gold, that perishes, though it be tried with fire. That's what I'm saying. That this is more precious than any any kind of jewel or any kind of you know knowledge. It is something that will be with you forever. Once you understand and prove something to yourself. And, and go by that this witness and this pattern that's irreplaceable. Keep going. Though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Yahshua the Messiah, whom having not seen, ye love, in whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that's the thing about, you know, we haven't, they say we haven't seen, but we have seen. We've seen 
by manifestations. We understand the principle. We see it. Something invisible, yet through the manifestation, we understand it and see it. And that's the, that's the secret of this. Because people get caught up in manifestations, and they can't get past that. And they lose yet what the principle really means. Go ahead, Scott. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls, of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who right. prophesied. That's what, you know, until Pentecost, you know, all, all the prophets, stuff, all these things that are being revealed to us now, all these, these are things that they wanted to understand and see. But there wasn't time then, until Pentecost, when Pentecost came, now that spirit that was in Yash was in men, been put in, into us. This is, uh, this is where our comfort is, this is where our strength is, by witnesses. So now we, we don't live by the world. We're in the world, and like Dan said, you know, yeah, sure. You're not supposed to live like a pauper. You live how you want to live. But don't let how you live be your God. This is your God. This is a class. This is what the most important thing in, in, there is in, in your heart. Should be this class. Should be this gospel. Should be the truth. And you can't do that on your own. He's got to put that in you. And that's going to be your strength. And now death, hell, and the grave has no power over you. Go ahead. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. And that's all it is, is grace. By the foolishness of preaching this gospel, and by grace. Mm. You know? And, and try to tell the people in the world that. You know, when we talk about misery, when you work in a jail, you've got misery with a capital M. So you want to talk about no mercy. Because there's no mercy in jail. There's no mercy. You show weakness, you get devoured. That's how it is. That's just a manifestation of the world. You know, we didn't, didn't earn walking into this room. We were divinely invited into this. And this is only by grace that we see what we see, that we understand and know anything about Yahweh or, or, or Yahshua. Like that movie, you know, he's they're, I accept Jesus, you know, and, and they're saved, and, and they're all at peace, and, and life is, is grand, mm -hmm. you know. They're going to come to see him, you know, I, I'm not saying now his purpose, but there's no salvation in Jesus. Never was, never will be. How are they different than us? They're no different. We're no better. Which is very fortunate. Go ahead. Searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of the Messiah, which was in them, did signify when it testified beforehand the sufferings of the Messiah in the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not us, that not unto themselves, but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Spirit sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. Right. That's what I'm saying. That these things are so profound and so... It's, I hate to say it, but it's out of this world. And that's what it is. It's out of this world. that These understandings and these... This gospel, once you start to see and understand, that right... Right in the beginning, right that cloud. He formulated that purpose and completed that purpose. Now he had to take shape and form within himself and had to manifest that purpose. And it's still going on today. And we don't know when that last soul is going to walk through that door. And this thing is going to get wrapped up. We don't know when. But there's also signs. And we know when we see the signs. Like Dan was saying with the world. Look what's going on. And it's in a way it's kind of fortunate for me to, to work where I work because I see the chaos and I can relate to it and understand it. 
you know, we don't know. Right here, when, when, when this, uh, this thing is going to close out. Now, but we got still two more ages yet to go. So it's not like the, it's the end of the end. It's, it's not, not the end of its purpose. Go ahead. Um, you want to keep going into that? Go out, out of the spirit. Yeah, just fill it up. Uh, and get down. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto so that, you. That's what beautiful gird up. Gird up. How, what's that mean? I mean, protect yourself. How do you protect yourself? By knowing, by understanding. And continue, you're going to read, you're going to make sure, you're going to understand, you're going to pursue. And he's going to show it to you. You're not going to earn it, you can't earn it. But in the same sense, it's not going to fall from the sky like man either. you got to come to class. That's what Dr. Kinley said, right? Every time that door is open, you come to class, why? He said, because you're going to need it. Well, we're seeing what's going on. If any, any of you watched that five-minute video from California, yeah. if that don't get you, if that don't get you uh, uh, motivated to know what you know, I don't know what will. Yeah. You know, even with a carnal mindset, it made no sense. The gospel is a man. The gospel is good news. Glad tidings. How good news of glad tidings is a man? Mm -hmm. A man is physical. Mm -hmm. The gospel says flesh and blood can't inherit. Nothing about the flesh or the blood or a man. Uh, I don't want to be going with that. I feel for them people. And how much they didn't know or didn't see. Do you realize the power of Yahshua and Yahweh when people can say these things? And, and the people who were hearing it accepted it. Bob was my mind. Just Bob was my mind. That someone could say things like that, that law and the prophets are, are, were for a time and a present. Those were our parents, so your parents were just thrown away. They don't mean nothing. That's who you are. That's who you are. You can't throw them away. How are you going to throw them away? That's your pedigree. That's who you are. Uh, I don't want to be going to that. Go ahead. I don't want to be going. My blood pressure up. I'm going to work tonight. <laughs> Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Yahshua the Messiah. Yeah. You know, uh, come to class. Learn all you can learn. Pray with all meekness. That didn't reveal himself to you. Well, and unlike that, that, that book was called The Case for Christ. This guy, he wrote like 15 other books since the start. He's a renowned Christian author. I forgot his name, I should have remembered his name, but I was so frustrated with watching him. You know, because people, but they don't come, people, that didn't come to class, but watch it. It was a good feel good movie, and oh geez, you know, you can bow down and open up your heart and accept Jesus, and you can get baptized, <coughs> and the world is good. You know, God is good, and God will just waiting for you. You're picking God. But when you come to the truth and understand that, no, He picks you, you don't pick Him. It's by grace. He is a name. Don't say, you know, my name's Frank. Don't say you know me and say my name's George. Because no, if you think my name's George and you don't know me. Mm -hmm. But uh, as obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts and your ignorance. But as he which hath called you <coughs> holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Right. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect to persons judges, judgeth according to every man's word, past the time of your sojourning here in fear. 
For as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of, the, of right. Yahshua. Blood of the Lamb. Without that blood, there's no salvation. That's why he had to come in and die. He had to come in and die. Without that blood, there's no salvation. There's no Pentecost. There's no nothing. He had to come in and die. And he didn't. <clears throat> the philoprogenitive love of his offspring. All these things, these are so beautiful. These things are so precious. These things are so powerful. Nothing, nothing in this world, any principality, any power is going to overcome that. Once you understand it and see it and know it in your heart, you are a different person. But it's not you. It's not your glory. It's not your wisdom. It's not your intelligence. It's His grace. All of this is His grace and His mercy. There's going to be a time. That means He's going to bow. We're going to be in that body. And anything outside of that body is going to burn. It's going to go. That's just how it is. And anything outside of the body of Joshua the Messiah is going to burn. And by grace and only by grace and by mercy are we going to be in that body mm -hmm. and have that same glorious body that, that he has. For him being the head and we being part of the body. For him being the, the groom and we're the bride. Either way you want to look at it, it's a principle. The point is, is we're nothing without him. So I just hope someone got something out of that. Uh, I'm going to just give all the glory and honor to Yahshua the Messiah. And with that I'm just going to sit down. Seven, eight. First John seven, eight. Okay. 
other young to start. First John five and seven. Is that one of them? First John five and seven. For there are three that bear record in heaven: the Father, the Word, and the Holy Spirit. And these three are one. And there are three that bear witness in earth. The spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So we've got the earthly witnesses being the blood, water, spirit. And you've got the heavenly, uh, the Father, the Word, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Or Yahweh, Yahweh, Elam, Yahshua. Those three are the witnesses in heaven. And then we've got the witnesses in the earth. So we've got the three witnesses in earth. And you're born, blood, water, spirit. And he's manifested throughout this creation like with the children of Israel, blood on the door, the waters of the Red Sea, and they led, the Spirit was in that cloud that led them through the Red Sea's blood, water, spirit. And that's what resurrected them into the wilderness. And then um, everything that you eat has to, it goes through a, a digestive process um, and ends up on your altar down here or in your large intestines. And there's a principle of blood there because that's where the blood pulls all the uh, nutrients. nutrition out of the, what's in that. Pulls the nutrition out, separates stuff out. The bad stuff gets, you know, either out of the draft or goes to the kidneys, you cleanse, but there's a principle of blood here. And your kidneys are what cleanses the blood, so you've got a principle of blood, water, and on top of your, <coughs> your kidneys is the adrenal for that, that fight or flight hormone or quickening or spirit. So you've got a principle of blood, water, spirit here, right manifest here. Court roundabout, because this is the court roundabout of your pattern being dictated by the tabernacle pattern. So you've got blood, water, spirit operating in you every single day of your life that you live. Mm -hmm. You've got blood, water, spirit going back here in principles. That's how the Bible's put together. And that's why Dr. Kelly's vision is so amazing, because you could read that Bible you know, back and forth, up and down, inside and out, and never see that it's going by a pattern. That's right. what this, this revelation has to do with seeing that this pattern is actually Yahweh element is his pattern, but seeing this pattern and how it operates, and that's how he talked, he said he he knew when, um, on an earthquake, I think, he said, if you knew how to work the tabernacle pattern, you would have been able to predict this earthquake too. You know, and different things that he predicted when he was in the flesh, it's because he knew the timing and the um, of, and the placement of vessels and all that of the tabernacle pattern. You can, you can figure things out if you know that tabernacle pattern. And sometimes we look at the news and we see things falling into place and we see a sign of blood and then we see water and now we go, okay, now we're waiting for that quickening or that resurrection. And you know that that pattern just, it doesn't stop. It, it works mm -hmm. this day. So this is how he's got this, these, um, this chart put together, showing the blood on the, you know, Noah going and preaching, he puts the blood on the people's head, um, and then there was a flood, there was some water, and it was an, uh, a, an angel that closed the door to that ark for Noah. He didn't close it, nobody else closed it, it was an angel or spirit closed that door, so it's principle blood, water, spirit. And that's how all these charts are put together, and it's shown as Thomas that this is a reflection of the Godhead. The theme, how the blood, water, spirit goes so perfectly together is just how the Godhead goes so perfectly together. They work as a unity. They all work as one. Um, so I'm talking about that body being put together. He called Israel out. And this was a, a body of people that he called out of Egypt. You know, they're down here being slaves to Pharaoh. And he called them up and out of here, and he changed, changed them from being slaves to, well, they were wanderers for 40 years. But after 40 years, they get up into Canaan's land, and they have um, a temple built here. And all everyone around is just like in awe of Israel. Nobody's going to pick a fight with Israel right now because they're, they're ruling. They're, they're rocking it. they got it going on, and everybody's just like, you know, you got it going on, Solomon. You got it going on. So this is um, so this body here went through some changes, I guess I could say. So from being slaves to being worshiping Yahweh, but being uh, 
directed in a particular way to do that. And then they come up here and they're pretty much free to do whatever because they've, they're, they've got freedom under, under Solomon because he's reigning and um, just trying to express like he came from slavery to freedom. And that's what happens when you come into this class. You learn from blood, water, spirit, and you start to be able to use this tabernacle pattern. And then you're, you're going around and gathering what you can while you're in the flesh. Because actually, the ta with the tabernacle pattern, this veil is to define the flesh. And that's how Yahshua ripped out that veil for us so that we're seeing beyond the flesh. So that when he was, when he, that, there was that earthquake and that veil was ran out in the most holy place, and it stood to find that high priest going in here once every once a year, the high priest could go into the most holy place and make a covenant for the children of Israel. But when Yahshua goes in, that one time, once and for all, when he uh, found his cross and he ascends to the Father, that veil is ripped out to show us that now. We're looking beyond the flesh. What's happening is beyond the flesh. So there's not a building to go to anymore. There's not, where is it when the, um, uh, it talks about that um, we are not, well, there's you are the temple, the Holy Spirit, but uh, there's and another. And so did you. Fitly formed together, you yeah. know, stones. I think it talks about stones. Peter. Is it Peter? But how we're the ones that make up that temple, and we're being fit together just perfectly. Oh. And it's not a physical building anymore. It used to be, but now it's not anymore. And that's what's going on now: is the building of the body of Yahshua. He's, pull, he's pulling his body together, which is, or his pride, is, as Frank said, or. I forget which one it was when the speaker was talking about Yasha's his bride or his body. And that's, that's where, that's, that's the kingdom also. The body is the kingdom, not that, not that it's a place, but it's a way of thinking. Like, and let this mind be in you, is that 2 Peter, no, 2 Timothy 2.5, is that, let this mind be in you, which is also Yasha Messiah. I'm trying to get across the idea that you're in heaven now, that that's where we dwell. We dwell in the body of Yahshua now, and we're looking for that universal revelation where that this flesh will put on immortality. I think it's Philippians 2.5. Hmm? I think it's Philippians 2.5. Philippians 2.5, let this mind be in you, yes. I know, was it? Pretty sure it was a 2.5. Philippians 2 5, and then there's that other about. Philippians 2 and 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in the Messiah, Yahshua. Now, see, which is different than the mind that we came in through the doorway. The mind we came in through the doorway with uh, could have been changed. You know, somebody told us about something, and we thought, oh, that's good, we go with that. Mm -hmm. Or I used to think there was something to Edgar Casey. I read some of those books, I was like, wow, that guy had it going on. He really. You know, he knew how to heal people through the mail, and, you know, he was really something. I used to think there was something to him. And I used to think, you know, there's different people in the creation that I thought, oh, they, they really knew. Nostradamus. Nostradamus. All these people think, oh, he's got it. Then you think, oh, then you go with that one. You go with that one. Never really, you changed your mind constantly. Now, Yahweh is spirit. Yahweh says, I change not. He doesn't change. Yeah. Us and our minds all the time. They go, oh, yeah, okay, no, yes, no, yeah. All the time we're changing our mind. But if you have the mind of Yahshua in you, that means your mind's not changing about certain things. It's not like, oh, yeah, blood, water, spirit was okay then, but it's not okay now. There's no change in the spirit. If it's good here, and I'm not saying that blood, water, spirit is what's going to be going on in the next creation. And I'm saying you're learning principles in this creation. You're learning to speak the language so that when you make it, when you receive that immortal body, you already know the language. You're not going to be lost. You're not going to be confounded because you don't know what's going on. You've already learned 
the language. You see how the spirit operates in this creation. And it's going to translate right into the next creation because it's the same spirit and I change not. Mm -hmm. So it's just going to take you whoop, right over. It's not going to be a big, like, you know, imagine being dropped in Japan and not knowing anybody or any Japanese. I mean, you're confound, you just are confused. You're just going to be lost. You're not going to know how to ask something to eat or, you know, you don't know sign language, you don't know anything. You're just lost. And that's how it's going to be for these carnal minds when, it, when this change comes and they're not a part of that body of Yahshua. But there's, you know, Yahweh's got a, he's got a purpose going on. There's two mysteries. There's the mystery of iniquity, and he doesn't change either. He he's, cannot be converted. This mystery doesn't change. This one doesn't change. Neither one of them are going to change. And we come in with a mind that can be changed. And so let this mind be in you that was in Yahshua. His mind's not changing. Your will is going to do the will of the Father. His mind is not going to change about that. And that's the mind that we've come to inherit. That spirit in us changes, it changes how you think. You used to think that way. Now you think with the spirit in mind. Mm. How, you know, what's going to be pleasing to the Father or you don't even have to really think that because he's put that spirit in you and he causes you to do his will. You're, you're just doing it. It's not even like you have to sit down and think about it. Like, oh, gee, you know, I love this. What would Jesus do? Mm -hmm. Never mind. You just, it's just, it's your nature. You don't even have to think about it. It's just your nature to do what's going to be, because you know what's pleasing, you know what's not pleasing, and, that, and it becomes unpleasant to you. The things that you realize are unpleasant to Yahweh after a while, you realize it's not fun anymore. I'm really not getting a kick out of that anymore. You know, it's just not pleasing to you. So you just stop it, you know? Um, so we're talking about this body that's being formed. We're talking about that's the body that's going to be going over. And uh, well, it's kind of a, a picture to look at to get an idea of this one. Because this one back here, you see how it, it is represented here with his arms folded and as it is unclothed. And over here, it says he's clothed and he's got on the garments of beauty and glory. So that you can see that there's been a change from the beginning to over here, just like there's a change from here to over here. See how there's, now there's more with him. There's members of his body, members that made up his body that have been, that have been called into the purpose. Actually, they're called from a long way back here. It's not manifested in here. So, um, New Jerusalem, what? Uh, yeah, did you get it? We didn't read it yet? Yeah, there's a couple spots. Okay. Um, Ephesians 2 and pick it up in 19. Now, therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the sons and of the household of Elman and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows unto a holy temple in Yahweh. Now, if we just stop and think about that, break it down just a little bit, and start it again. <coughs> and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. That's where our foundation is, in the law, and the prophets. That's our foundation. And that's what we're, we're built on. That's what we stand on. We build on that. Go ahead. Yahshua the Messiah himself being the chief cornerstone. Now you understand that. Bob could probably do a better explanation of a cornerstone, but it's, you know, it's marking a building. That that's when, the, you know, this stone is set, this building is finished. He's the chief cornerstone. It's got the markings on it, I believe, to you know, dedicate the building or to put the year that it's constructed or whatever. And sometimes, is the cornerstone bob at the top? Could it be? Is that a keystone? Keystone at the top. Uh, keystone at the top. Foundations at the bottom. Okay. All right. Then the, the foundation. So the foundation and he's the cornerstone. Go ahead. In whom all the building fitly framed together. We're in him. That's where we are. In him. Growth unto a holy temple in Yahweh. And we're growing. It's not like you got it made once you, you know, you think, okay, I'm in the body, whatever, I can relax now. I wouldn't do that. Now is not a time to relax. 
Because look at the craziness out there. It's time to really start arming yourselves with witnesses. Because that's, right. that's what you got. That's what you got to fight with, is your witnesses. And how and the law and the prophets. And when they throw that out, then there's just there's no fighting with them. If they're not gonna listen to the law and the prophets, there's nothing much else you can do. Well, you have to keep in mind that that mystery over there, he's bound in chains of darkness. Mm -hmm. There's no converting that mystery. None. Right. If you've got someone whose mind is still this way or that way, then there's a chance. There's a fire. And it talks about in Judah, they, you know, trying to pull them out of the fire at that last minute, trying to pull somebody out of that fire, trying to mm -hmm. rescue them from that the lake of fire. Because, you know, their mind's not right. And you know when you came in here, your mind wasn't right. And he set our minds right about things. He, he let us in on the truth so we could know something that was really true and accurate. Go ahead, Jeanette. In whom, in whom ye are also building together for a habitation of Elohim through the Spirit. That's what we are. We're the vessels of the Holy Spirit. You know, um, we have this treasure in earth and vessels. It's you know it's all through the all through the book, the, the Holy Spirit. And then there's that one. Um, and without controversy, great is the mystery of the uh, uh, you know, seed of angels. I don't know where it is. Colossians. Yeah. Colossians. Finish that thought, then I got one other little thing, and then I'm going to be sitting down. First Timothy. First Timothy three sixteen. Okay. Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. Elohim was manifest in the flesh. Manifest in the flesh. Justified in the spirit. Justified in the spirit. Seen of angels. Seen of angels. Preached unto the Gentiles. Uh -huh. Believed out in the world and received up into glory. And received up into glory. Or that wasn't exactly what I was thinking. I was thinking about that was irrelevant. I'm going to move on to the other thought that I had, which is you had Jerusalem here, right? And this is Jerusalem below. This is the natural, physical Jerusalem that your first speaker was talking about. And um, how this temple was 120 years in the building, right? I'm sure it was 120 years that it took to build that temple. Seven years in the building. Seven years in the building. Four, four years into the foundation. Four years into so it was only seven in the building. Ark was, right. was 120 years. All right. Anyway, all right, never mind that the numbers, but this was the place where Yahweh said, I'm going to put my name. And this is where he, you know, where he blessed them. It was on a top of a mountain, right? And this was, and it looked like a man sitting on a throne because you did John from Boaz and then the porch and the sanctuary and like the top that had gold, like a, like a king sitting on, and there was a gold on top of his head. So there's like a man sitting in a chair on the top and it was in an elevated place. Well, that's where Yahweh said he called that, you know, his city. Well, then along come the Roman Catholics, and they go, well, we don't want it there. We want it over in Rome. So they moved it over to Rome. And then um, they said, this is where God dwells now. And so they told Peter, made him the first pope that never, you know, Yahweh know, didn't set up any lineage. He said, he'd be the one. There's no... It's over in Daniel, where he's going to he's going to take up scepter himself. He's not going to hand it to somebody else. So they pretend Peter's the first one, and then the second pope that they get is lying on us, right? Lying on us. Lie on us, which is lie on us. <laughs> I mean, they're just they're just trying to fool you every every which way. So this is not this is Jerusalem below, and then you've got Rome, and there's a big difference. It's Yahweh at least did call this his city and it's a reflection. This is supposed to be a reflection. Jerusalem below is a reflection of Jerusalem above, which is another way to say the body of Yahshua. How we're all being fitly, you know, we're being brought into this city that heavenly citizenship and that all works into it. And this is below. But Rome 
interesting. Now, there was something about the attack of the head of 20 and 20 years ago. Maybe it was the timing. Anyway, I know that it took 120 years for the Vatican to be built. The guy that gave the blueprints, it was 120 years after they got the blueprints before that thing was formed. They can't remember where the 120 was there. there. There's all right. But you see Jerusalem below, and there's a Jerusalem above. And you see Rome below, there's no Rome above. Mm -hmm. It's just down from there. Or you've got that Mr. Iniquity working over there in the Vatican, trying to get people to think that's where they should be taking their pilgrimages and all that kind of stuff. You know, you should visit the Vatican sometime in your life. They all think that that's a really cool thing. If you're Catholic, if you've been to the Vatican, that's pretty cool, according to Catholics. That's like what, a thing that you should do, you know? And, and it's just all falsehoods. It's just all built one lie upon another lie upon another lie upon another lie. So no wonder the second pope's name is Lionel because that's all they've done over there in Rome. All right, um, and that, so the Jerusalem above is about the Ashwa, which is being put together now, which we're going to party yourself to that body. So that's why your mind can't be changed. You know, somebody goes, oh, no, that's, you know, that's old stuff, that's old hat, that's, that's the black, and now we're into the white. They tell you, they try to, you know, squirrel around with it all kinds of ways, try to get you to go with what they're saying. But it doesn't matter because we've got our foundation built in the law and the prophets, and we see it the thing the way it's supposed to be. It's not going to change. It's not going to change. So thank you for the time. And oh, my next speaker, I can introduce Dr. W. Kennedy. of the law or of, of Yahweh. 
Now, that was just a physical example to show what the new covenant would be, that your thoughts, your, your being, your doing, would always, always be under the auspices of this new covenant or this Holy Spirit or Yahshua. And so that's our promise now is being under that salvation and that's the way we walk and that's the way we move. And it's just like um, if you are told tonight Uncle William died and you're first in line for the inheritance and it's five million dollars. No questions. The lawyers have confirmed it, you are the heir of five million dollars. <laughs> you begin to change things in your life. Yes. It's, how could you not? You begin to think in, in different uh, pathways of how you're going to proceed with this new inheritance because certainly you're not going to think, oh, how am I going to pay the mortgage? Oh, my God, here comes that bill from the doctor. And you're not thinking that way because it's all covered now. So you begin to think in a different way. And that's the salvation that we're talking about. If we can just start in 2 Corinthians 4 and 1, you begin to act differently with this inheritance. And Peter was talking about that inheritance and the way we're going to walk. Maybe I'll have... Uh, one person in 2 Corinthians 4 and 1, and then the other person in the scripture reading, because there's going to be a change, and the, the, the speakers have been talking about it all night. There's going to be a change. When you know you have salvation, you're not sweating. You're not wringing your hands. You're not thrown by the five-minute video. It's ridiculous, and you know it. And you're just so grateful that you're not under that delusion. Right. Because we all were under delusion before we came into this truth. And Yahweh pulled us out of it. But it says when Yahweh puts you under delusion, look out. There's no place you're going to go to get out from under that. When the mystery of iniquity has got you fooled, there's Yahshua. Mm -hmm. And he'll pull you out like they were talking, pull you out of that fire. But when Yahweh puts it on you, hammer down. So go ahead. Let's just start in 2 Corinthians 4 and 1. And what I'm going after is the light and the darkness. And that salvation is being in that light. And that's what they, they were talking about. When you're in that salvation, it's the faith and the operation of Yahshua. And that is your righteousness, is your faith in the blood of the Lamb. See, and that's all it is. But if you throw away Yahweh, Dr. Kinley once explained the law and the prophets as being Yahweh's words unto man. And some man's going to come along and throw it out and say no need for it anymore? It, it's just absurd. And people sit there and shake their head. It's absolutely absurd. It's Yahweh's word to man. It's Yahweh's witnesses. It's his glory to get to the point where Yahshua came in and fulfilled that. And for a man to sit up and say, I decided, it's over, it's just crazy. It's just like when Absalom <coughs> decided he was king. Did that make him king? Absolutely not. They were already over there on the other side of the river, and they were already celebrating Solomon. But Absalom looked around and he saw nobody greater. See, but Yahshua didn't decide it was going to be Absalom. It was going to be Solomon was the next king. So go ahead. 1 Corinthians 4 and 1. Uh -huh. Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Yahshua and stewards of the mysteries of Elohim. Wait a minute, Bob. That's second. Right. Do you want second? Yeah. Did I say first? <laughs> we're we're going to get to the point where um, we can appreciate the light and the darkness. And like Pat was talking about the black and the white, that's real big. But you know what? That was real big about 20 years ago when we uh, heard other explanations of black and white. And it's a real big thing, and it's just so funny that, um, you know, when it gets right down to it, black is darkness and the white is light, or making you able to see. Like, if you were out there and there's no street lights and there's no car lights, you're going to have a hard time seeing. Go ahead. 
2 Corinthians 4. What? Yeah. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not. Wasn't Dan saying he had this idea on his mind about mercy before the, you know, the scripture reading was even called? Therefore, we've received this mercy. So that's why we are in this ministry, and that's why we come down here, and that's why we uh, support this class and, and make it free and, and make it publicized, and anybody can come in and enjoy it is because we've received it free, and we're going to freely give it. Go ahead. But have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. We've renounced the darkness, and we could not renounce the darkness if we didn't know the light, or if we weren't in the light. Right. You could not call out the lie unless you had the truth. And that's what we're down here doing, is we're renouncing, we're pointing that out, and we're getting rid of it, we're casting that out. And we're bringing out the truth of the matter, and that's what you saw happen tonight with the speakers that were up here, was to bring you up to the truth of the matter and renounce those hidden things that you didn't know before. You just simply did not know. And somebody had to bring it to your attention and show you that Lord and God weren't names and show you that there was no J. These are things that have been renounced, things that have been shown to you and you can go check this out yourself, and you can embrace this because you checked it out. Mm -hmm. That's why you could, not because Scott said, not because Bob said, but because you could check it out for yourself, see? And when you see that, there's nothing like it. I remember way ago when John and I checked these names out. When you see it for yourself, there's nothing like it. You can't wait to get to the class the next time. Just because you're so excited about the truth of the matter. And you're involved in the truth of the matter. And people go to great lengths. Like he was explaining that uh, that uh, reporter, the great lengths he went to research and check out <coughs> Christianity. I'm, I'm just amazed that he didn't come up with a bust because there's so many problems in that religion. I'm just amazed that he became so uh, converted. But go ahead. Not walking in craftiness, uh -huh. or, nor handling the word of Elohim deceitfully. Not handling it deceitfully. It's out here. It's blood, water, spirit, 40. It's death, burial, resurrection. It's accepting Yahshua. Not handling it crafty, craftily. But you see how some people do. See, once you get people to look to you instead of the law and the prophets, that's when you got them. That's when the trap is set. And you got them, and then once you got them in the trap, they're yours. See? And that's what's happening in these different classes where they're not going by the law and the prophets. They can say absolutely anything, and it's golden. See? But that was never so. Anywhere you see, it was always what thus saith Yahweh and how he was dealing with his people. It was never, you just get up and say what you want. Ever. Go ahead. But by manifestation of the truth, yes. commending ourselves to every man's conscience in right. the sight of Elohim. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience. You're not going to specifically and arrogantly go and do something in front of somebody when you know it's going to bother them. See, commending ourselves to every man's conscience. And that's just something that you would not want your brother to stumble by, so you're not going to do something intentionally. Now, if you don't know you're hurting them or you're messing them, up their head, that's one thing. But you're not going to do it intentionally. You're not going to hurt them or cause them to stumble. Go ahead. But if our gospel be hid, it yeah. is hid to them that are lost. See? Now what's the gospel? Death, burial, resurrection, blood, water, spirit. Death, burial, resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah according to what? The scriptures. Read what you just said again, Bob. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid. hid it is hid to them that are lost. So if somebody gets up there and says it's not the gospel, you think it's hid to them? How could you possibly? The good news is you've inherited $5 million. How could you possibly say, nah, I don't want that. I want a man. Right? How could you possibly go there? It's such good news. You've inherited $5 million. All you got to do is go down to the bank and collect, right? Yeah. And you're going to say, nah, nah. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? If the gospel is hid, it's hid to them that are lost. And Dr. Kinley, 
The death, the burial, the resurrection of Yahshua the Messiah according to the scriptures. That is in uh, 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 through 4. Now Dr. Kinley said the blood, water, spirit 40 was given to him to uh, coalesce, if I could say, to bring it together, to show and prove his ministry. Like Peggy said, you would never, ever put this pattern together. You would never get this whole thing put together unless somebody ever told you. Right. And that's the same thing with Dr. Kinley. He would have never figured it out either unless he was showed this vision and had a revelation. Mm -hmm. You see, anybody can have a vision. Anybody can start putting... You can go to the uh, a Bible store right now and you can pick up a book and it shows you all the little similarities about this being a lamb and Yahshua being a lamb and the lamb over here and the lamb. They can pick up words and show similarities. But they cannot get the revelation. See, that's where they lose it. They lose it right at the cross. They cannot pass over from that death unto life or carnal to spiritual. So he's talking about it right here. If the gospel's hid, it's hid to them that are lost. Go ahead. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. They believe not. In what? Blood, water, spirit, 40. See? Now, if you say it's a man and the man is Dr. Kinley, that is so far-fetched. That's so far going over the edge. It's just not even, you know, it's Niagara Falls. You might as well just, you know, it's it, you're so far over the edge. It's it's blood, water, spirit, 40, head, head, it red, death, burial, resurrection. See? Now, if you say it's a man, that just, that is, it's just not solid enough. And I remember um, uh, people telling me, like, um, uh, Dr. Gross would say, you know, Yahweh's all in all and that's all. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Kinley would say to him, you need to break that down. Mm -hmm. See, it's just like throwing a three-month-old a steak. Yes, there's nutrients, there's proteins, there's all kinds of stuff in that steak. But is it any good to that baby at three months old? You need to break that down, see. And that's what we, we're doing here. We're breaking this stuff down. We're not blinding the minds. We're not telling people it's a man, and the man is Dr. Kinley. That's crazy. Dr. Kinley said in his own words, I am not your savior. And they're saying, yes, you are. Who does that? Who, who immediately opposes the truth? It's the other mystery that opposes, see? He opposes the truth. That's the lie. You can't have a lie until you have the truth to lie upon it. Mm -hmm. See? Go ahead. Bless the light of the glorious gospel of Yahshua. The light. See? Taking you out of darkness. The light of the glorious gospel of Yahshua. The glorious good news that he died for our sins. That he didn't stay dead. That he was buried and he rose again. The third day according to the scriptures. See, you're not going to understand any of this unless you get in here and break this stuff down. You've got to see how this Joshua, how he was bound by the law and the prophets. Don't throw it out. You're gonna, then you're just going to fill it in with anything you want about what he was doing. And we used to do that in church. Fill it in. We didn't know. We just fill it in with whatever. And some people didn't even believe in Jonah or Adam and Eve, or any of those stories. They were all just fairy tales. Yeah. We come to find out they are real events that happened designed by Yahshua to tell his story before he gets on the scene. Nobody else can do that. It's so powerful if you believe it and if you see it. Okay, so here we go. So keep going, Bob. We're, we're coming out of this darkness. Who is the image of Elohim? Who is the image, the image of Elohim, of Elohim that would shine unto them? That would shine unto them. So we're talking about coming out of darkness, and it's not just a dark room to turn on the lights. We're talking about a change in your mind, and we've been talking about that, right? What happens in your heart and in your mind? And this salvation is the piece of that. The salvation by what? Faith in Yahshua. Okay, keep going if there's any more there, because I want to go over to the scripture. For we preach not ourselves, but Yahshua the Messiah, mm -hmm. and ourselves your servant for Yahshua's sake. We're preaching not ourselves. We're preaching Yahshua the Messiah. You can't preach Yahshua the Messiah 
You can't preach the good news without doing blood, water, spirit, 40, death, burial, resurrection, glorification. See, that's the principle. That's the line upon line, right? Who's he going to teach? Those that are, that are um, drawn from the milk, drawn from the breast, and taken from the milk, whatever. Drink from the milk. Okay. How is it? Line upon line, precept upon precept. What's that? All gone? That's all for nothing? It doesn't make sense. These are Yahweh's words to man. These are his witnesses to show what he was doing when Yahshua came on the scene. Nobody else could possibly do this. See, go ahead. For Elohim who commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Now this is way back here in Genesis. Yahweh Elohim commanded the light to shine out of darkness. Now this is what we're, we're going to talk about. He's commanding light to shine out of darkness in your mind. That's what we're talking about. He showed you how he, how he did it back here with the creation. That's just proof of what he's going to do with this creation, which is us. He's commanding. He's not saying maybe and if and what about. He's commanding the light to shine out of darkness. Now, how does that happen? Didn't Peg talk about this veil being rent? And what's happening? All of a sudden, these rooms are our unity, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, there's something happening there. He commanded the light to shine out of the darkness. And wow, did you, did you recognize a change? And what you thought. And suddenly, you're spending your inheritance. Only it's not five million, it's eternal. Eternal resource. Mm -hmm of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit. And Dan had them read, it's an eternal resource and you're spending them every minute of every day. You're walking in a different way. You're walking in the light. He commanded it. He didn't say maybe and what if and Devin, if you're down to class for 10 years, you're gonna get this promise. No, he just said, let it be, and it was. He spoke and it stood fast. I think we read that or maybe I was just reading it as I flipped through. Um, Isaiah 26 and 3. No, I want uh, 33 and 6. 33 and 6. It's just all these things are just for us to see the faith of the operation. I want to give you a, a silly, stupid example. Okay? Right now, I don't know what's in anybody's head, but I can create a creation in your head right now, Donald Trump. Did I create a creation in your head? Did you see a man? I bet you didn't see Walt Disney. Bad hair. Bad hair. He saw Donald Trump. But it wasn't Walt Disney, was it? It wasn't Paul Newman. Dan created that creation in our heads, right? I spoke and it stood fast in your head. That's just a little simple example. Now Yahweh goes, he speaks. You got that in Isaiah? He speaks and whammo. Isaiah 33 and 6 or 33 and 9? There's wisdom and knowledge should be this. Oh, where is that? She spoke and it stood fast. Um, Boy. Not Proverbs, it's Psalms 33. Oh, it's in Psalms. No wonder I got you in the wrong book. I thought that was right. Psalms 33. Okay. Okay. Isaiah 33, I mean Psalms 33, 6, and it's also um, 9. Yeah. Uh, now, don't forget, right? What is the word? Go ahead and read that, Scott. But what is the word? It's Yahweh Elohim. Shape and form. Making things happen. Making things come forth so we can see them. Right? Go ahead. Um, Psalms 33 and 9. For yeah. He spake and it was done. Mm -hmm. He commanded and it stood fast. He commanded for the light to come out of the darkness and it stood fast and it happened. Just like that, you're turned on. You're tuned in. You have a revelation. Just like Dr. Kinley had to have not only the vision but the revelation. And he went on for the rest of his life making these classes available and sharing what Yahweh gave to him 
to give to you. And that's just what we're talking about, is sharing this truth. Go ahead. Let's, um, verse 6. Verse 6. Psalms 33 and 6. Oh, okay. By the word of Yahweh were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. Perfect. By the breath of his mouth. You've got to see these things happen in the creation so you can believe that they're happening in your creation. I want to go over really quick to Hebrews. I probably, I'm not going to get to Peter, but I just want to prove this point. Uh, once again, nail this down hard. Um, talking about the law and the prophets. Uh, we all know this. Um, somebody out there maybe can appreciate it a little bit more. Mm -hmm. um, but please, please, please don't get off the law and the prophets. Don't listen. Prove it to yourself how important they are. But it, when you see in the scriptures, Paul, he was day and night going to the law and the prophets. Uh, Peter talks about the scriptures. Uh, Yahshua, he proved himself to the people on that road. Uh, going back to uh, Moses and the prophets mm -hmm. to show what he was supposed to do. Oh, fools, don't, didn't you read what that said about me? How I would come from Bethlehem. How were you supposed to know that? There was a star in the sky. It's all in the Law and the Prophets. Mm -hmm. So uh, Hebrews 1 and 1. Hebrews 1 and 1. Elohim, Elohim, who Elohim. At, some, at sundry times and in diverse manners, mm -hmm. spoke in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Okay. Oh, Elohim, at different times, spoke to who? By what? Uh, he spoke to the fathers. Spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. By the prophets. Now this, well, didn't I just say that Dr. Kinley said the law and the prophets were Yahweh's words unto man, right? He spoke to them by the prophets. He told them what was coming. Prophets, prophesy, prophesying, telling people what's going to come to pass, right? He never put them into a captivity until he told them what was going to happen, and they did it anyway. But he prophesied, he told them. He told them what he liked. He told them what he didn't like. Keep going. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his son. He's the culmination. You can read that over in Hebrews, the ninth chapter. I come in the volume of the book. He is the culmination of the law and the prophets and him fulfilling that and ushering in that new covenant. See? And they want to throw it out? Isn't that red flag? That, that's awful. That's terrible. Go ahead. Whom he hath appointed, whom he hath appointed heir of all things. Heir by, of all things. By whom also he made the worlds. By whom also he made the worlds. I mean, you're talking amazing power. You're talking being led into something that is the mystery of all mm -hmm. mysteries. Yeah. And we know it because we're his children, or we're his bride, or we're in his body. Where <laughs> he goes, we go. We know what's going on. See? Because we've received of that spirit. See, he commanded the light to shine out of darkness. That's what we're down here about. That's what we're down here to show you and to prove to you. See, and if there's any, any way that it hasn't been proven, let's hear the questions. Let's hear about it. And let's, let's dig in and get into it because the proof is here. Thank you. Thank you. 